Beth always creates such a welcoming environment. We love having guests. As uh, Monica found out on our website, you don't have to RSVP. You can let us know if you're coming if you like, but anybody's welcome to come at any time because the most important meeting role is the audience. That's why regular club attendance <coughs> is really important because people are having the nerve to, to get up here especially need to have an audience. And the biggest compliment that I received last week from Casey, who was our guest speaker and she's going to be in the Metro Division contest, is she said at the area contest that she kept looking over at me because I'm so engaged and I laugh out loud and I was nodding and that that was encouraging for her. And a lot of times at contests, that's one place where you get the poker face, because you're rooting for your particular contestant. <laughs> that's really not what we're here about. And I've actually gotten that from a couple of contestants at different contests. So being in the audience really is the most important thing. Otherwise, we'd just, just be getting off. <laughs> Our meeting roles and responsibilities, as TJ pointed out in his general evaluation last week, are the things that give us a structure that help things move around and that we do this consistently. So that's part of my goal today is to talk about the essentials of each role, how to do them consistently, and what resources you have already at your disposal quite easily to help you do those roles. These are all the roles that we have today. I'm just going to go in order of kind of the chronological order that we do in our club. Beth is going to talk a lot about being the Toastmaster today. Some of the most important things that the Toastmaster can do, one is to fill the roles ahead of time of the meeting. The resource you can use to help you do that is when you log into the website. As a member, there is a private member directory with everybody's emails and everybody's phone numbers. I find myself sometimes on Thursday nights calling people, are you coming or what? You know? Um, and so it's really important to fill those roles. We do have people where sometimes you don't know until the morning of that you're going to get here. So the Toastmaster may approach you and ask you to take the role. It all falls into place somehow. The another thing that is very important is to prepare introductions for speakers. And this is one thing that we can really do better about. But part of that is that speakers, you have to enter what the speech is that you're going to do, and there's also a space on the agenda where you can put in the introduction, you can bring a copy to give to the Toastmaster, and work together as a joint project, because the Toastmaster is the person who can really pump you up for the audience, <laughs> say that you're a really wonderful person. Printing agendas is very important, so that everyone in the club can see that the structure, and especially for our guests and our newer members, that is really, really important to see that structure. The most important thing is to bring it in on time. And just one little pointer is, as Beth is doing, is you never leave the stage open. If you're speaking or doing your role, you wait for the Toastmaster to come and greet you. Some of us, we want to run away afterwards. <laughs> oh my gosh, I want to go hide now. All right, tip time. Tip time is a very important part of our meeting. Not all Toastmasters clubs have it. And it's just a two minutes, something really simple. If the Toastmaster has a theme that's something you can contact them about, it's nice a lot of times to tie it into that. And that also gives you an idea of what you might speak about. Also, if you're looking for, oh my gosh, what tips are you gonna get? Here on twitter.com slash toastemberness, someone's been tweeting, <laughs> Many effective articles and congratulating them. You do not need to have a Twitter account to do that. You just need an internet connection to work. <laughs> Twitter.com slash toast inverness. Also on our website, if you go into the left navigation, there's also a little icon there for our YouTube and our Twitter channels, and hopefully in a few days for Facebook as well. Next up, we have our Topics Master. Again, you may want to tie into the theme that the Toastmaster has set. One thing we discovered last week, I'm going to congratulate myself here. I've been looking for years about what is the essence 
have a really good impromptu speech. And basically, it's telling the story. Think about the impact me had today with her telling an emotional story. When the project that she was doing could be just a very simple facts only briefing. Instead, we have an emotional pull that ties us in. When you're formulating your questions or doing creative things like bringing a picture or objects, one thing to consider is, does this give people the opportunity to tell a story that's gonna pop into their head right away? If you're the topics master, a nice thing to do is to go to the guests and ask them and explain what table topics are and ask them if they would, be, if they would like to speak during the meeting and then ensure that they have the opportunity to do so. Then the next thing is to call on people who don't have a speaking role. If you're calling on evaluators to come up, <laughs> it's really hard because they're, they're thinking about what am I gonna say after the table topic, so anyone else. Um, what value do we have from being topics master? That's a question I have for you to answer right now. It's part of your CL, your confident leadership. Okay, it's part of the confident leadership. And it reminds me of what happens when you're at a meeting or a social gathering and you want to get conversations going. How do I just get that pot going? Well, sometimes this actually helps. So becoming a better conversationalist as well as an impromptu speaker by knowing what questions to ask. Or not, yeah. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great safe place. That's important thing, the audience that we're creating a safe place. Okay, so moving on to our timer. Oh my goodness. Uh, so the club that I am part of that meets on Sundays alternating between 1.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time because we have people from all over the world. We've got a bunch of Aussies, people in London, people in Dubai, Canada, all over the United States, Mexico, and we have somebody from India, this global online only club. Now one of the challenges is having a timer. <laughs> and I thought this past Sunday, it's like, oh, our timer, you know, wasn't able to get the tech to get in. And I thought, oh, well, that's really simple. The timer's easy, right? That's what we give our newbies. <laughs> oh my gosh, I messed it up so badly. <laughs> it was just an absolute class. Fortunately, they were very understanding. Because you have a lot of challenging things when you're getting into all these different times. And what Camilla did today is perfect. She asked me, she asked me, and she made sure to verify exactly what the timing signals are. And then also letting the audience know as well. And also when we're doing table topics and learning that bringing things in on time really is the most important thing you can do. Because think about when you go to a conference and the keynote speaker or breakout sessions go over. It just screws up the rest of the day. And that's important that we manage our time well when we're speaking so that we help everybody come in on time and want to respect people's time and be able to go. All right. Grammarian, word of the day. Welcoming is a good one. One thing to consider with this is uh, to choose a word of the day that is reasonable. Somebody was reading about Donald Trump and she decided, oh, let's do this intermediation. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. If you're wondering where to get a word of the day, there is conveniently a twitter.com slash toast infernus. A word of the day. These are great words. These were in Fifty Shades of Grey, so I just put those up. <laughs> 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 is really important. It is hard, I think, to combine grammarian and the odd counter because the odd counter is looking for detractions, odds, ums, and errors. And I find it difficult when I'm grammarian and I'm looking for the gems to look for the detractions at the same time. One of the things I learned was Beth, when she first joined the club, she was an odd counter and I have this problem. People are like, oh, I can't understand what you're saying. Chris one time gave me a compliment and said, you need to slow down for his regular English speakers. And that was to be 
I was saying, finally Beth comes in one day and she said, you're talking your run on sentences. You say a sentence, you say and so, and then you keep going on. And just like the word of the day, I like to play with great words. It helps break up the on my we Oh my gosh, I don't know. Anyway, double pledge verbal blunders. Why is this important? Feature on David Letterman. <laughs> Just watch the president go on YouTube. It is absolutely hilarious, hilarious to do his onion. As you're learning about this, you may find that you're, you're noticing more in your speech and the speech of others what's going on. And I found this wonderful used book called Um. Here's his advice. As you read this book, you may find that you begin to notice how people actually speak. That reaction is perfectly normal. You may also become more aware of your own speaking. This too is normal. Your heightened awareness may also make you want to point out to your friends, loved ones, loved ones, colleagues, and even random talkers their every verbal blunder. This is not recommended. <laughs> For the sake of harmony, point out only the most interesting. that George W. Bush was bad. Dan failed before that. All right, moving on to our next role. Oh. I'm not really going to talk about speakers, except to say that speakers are really the crux of the Toastmasters Club. Well, the audience is, but the speakers, that's what we're here to improve on. And it is really important to just take into consideration to make sure you're well prepared. Read the project descriptions very closely. And make sure that you're using a topic that is fits, fits that. Also, contact your evaluator. That is a really good thing to do. To let them have a little bit of help because a good evaluation is like receiving a anniversary cake. Oh. <laughs> it's the greatest gift that you can give somebody to give constructive feedback that helps build self-esteem, creates a safe place, and then also helps people improve, needs to have constructive feedback. One thing I'd just like to point out, we are, I already did a presentation a couple months ago on evaluation. One thing to touch on is remember that after the meeting, you get to talk to the person. You can save a lot of comments for that, for the one-on-one. -on -one. Don't, please don't hand them the manual and then run out the door. <laughs> there needs to be additional feedback and explaining things. Finally, one of my favorite general evaluators <laughs> It's dangerous when Gretchen takes photos and gets those bursts. Jennifer has I've I've discovered as I love to look at though, because Jennifer especially has great, great hand gestures. <laughs> Is that okay? That it is? All right. <laughs> I've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good one. Uh, we do this a little different in Toast of Immigrants. I just want to point that out. We do it differently than most Toastmasters clubs do. A lot of Toastmasters clubs, the general evaluator runs the evaluation part of the meeting. So when we get to, when we finish with table topics, the Toastmaster hands it over to the general or chief evaluator who calls up the evaluators and the odd counters and the grammarian. One thing that's helpful about that is it does give people a place to learn and grow and start running parts of the meeting. Same with the topics master, that's a great place to do that. I think it's okay to have it at the end because the handoff, when we only have an hour, does take some time and kind of interrupts the flow of the meeting a little bit. The general evaluator comments on the meeting overall, but also kind of focusing on giving feedback to the evaluators as well. That's one place that they're going to Those are our roles. A couple of, as well as twitter.com slash toast of And the back of your competent communication manual 
is a description, 20 seconds, a description of all the roles in here and lots of tips that can come in here. Also, in Toastmaster Magazine, that is a great place to do it. Anyway, in conclusion, <laughs> seal number one, seal number two, I've got this too. And make sure that when I look at this list in the back, that I'm varying my roles. Otherwise, I would be a grammarian every single week. And I definitely would not be the timer. <laughs> there is a project called Time Management where the timer is mandatory. Fortunately, I'll use this and get feedback from people on my time management as a speaker. <laughs> <laughs>